everybody, Carl Schuf here from Snorkel.tv and today I want to do just a very quick tutorial and just basically give you a file that's set up ready to go and this is going to be a file that will toggle and fade sound. Alright, so let's just do a little demo here real quick. I have a Swift open, I click, sound comes in real strong, nice fade, click again and you have a nice clean fade out so you don't have an abrupt cutoff. So I know that the uh, recording here doesn't get the audio from the computer that great, but the Swift on my site will work great. Uh, let's just do it one more time. Fade in. Nice. Fade out. All right, so we're going to look over this code real quick, and let's just go to my actions. And I want to show you that what we're using to load and control the sound is Green Sox MP3 loader, which is part of the Loader Max family. Uh, Loader Max is a great set of tools for loading anything, whether it be images, audio, swifts, videos. Uh, and I'm going to be going into Loader Max in great detail in the near future with a lot of uh, image loading uh, tutorials. Uh, but right now, um, I wanted to really focus on the whole how to fade a sound in and out. And with the native AS3 sound, sound channel, sound transform stuff, it's a real pain in the neck. So uh, with these Loader Max tools, uh, it just makes it really easy. So we're not going to focus on a lot of the particulars of Loader Max today, um, but you can see on the Green Sox site there is the documentation for the MP3 loader, which tells you all about how you can pretty much load, loop, track the progress of, and uh, play a sound file with one or two lines of code. It's extremely streamlined. So I'll give you links for this and then also for Loader Max in general, um, so you can see how you can load different uh, assets. And when you're building a gallery, you know, it's great. If I wanted to, uh, let's just unload everything here. And if I want to say max connections equals four, it's very easy just to load. And then now four things are going to be loading at once. And we can pause the loading of all our assets. I can click on an asset to prioritize its loading in the queue. So check it out. We're going to be going here really soon. But for now, let's quickly uh, bang out this uh, simple sound fade in, fade out toggle. All right, so we're going to import a few of the necessary green sock classes up top, and we're going to activate the volume plugin. I have links here for more documentation. But really, to load a sound, what you do is you just create an MP3 loader, and you tell it what file you want to load. And very similar to how Tween Light works with its VARS object, I can specify an on-complete callback function, which means that once the loading is done, we will init our app. I can set the default volume of the sound to zero, and I can also tell it to repeat indefinitely. If you try to do just this with uh, the native AS3 tools, it would be a lot more difficult. So then we load our sound, and now to track the muted state of the sound, we have a sound on boolean. A boolean variable can have a value of either false or true. So basically I want to keep track of whether the sound is on or whether the sound is off. So in my init function, once my sound has loaded, I'm just doing some very basic tween lights that are going to fade in my assets. So I don't want somebody clicking on my stage until or on my icons until the sound is there. So you'll see if we test the streaming um, real quick, you'll see that once the sound is loaded, now it's going really slow. Everything fades in and it can play. All right, and then we fade out. Okie dokie. And also with the MP3 loader, we could have easily tracked the progress and built the progress bar, but that's not for this right now. All right, so we have this little function here called toggle sound that's activated by any time you click on the stage. All right, and if we have a Boolean va value that's false, and we want to switch it to true, um, we have the switcheroo where we use the not modifier here to set something to the opposite of what it is. So I'm telling sound on to be the opposite of its current value. So if it's true, it will be false. If it's false, it will be true. All right, and on top of that, Boolean values can be converted to integers. So if something is false, that equates to zero, and if something is true, it will equate to one. So what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, 
once we know whether or not the sound is on or off, we're going to convert that value to a number, which is going to be either 0 or 1. And once that's done, we're going to use that number to tween the volume of our sound, and we're also going to tell my sound MC to go to a particular frame. So if, the, if sound on is going to be false, that means my value is going to be 0. So we're going to tell tween light to tween my sound to a value of volume of zero. And now I don't want my MC to go to and stop a frame at zero because there is no frame zero. So we're going to do zero plus one is one. And if I just look inside of this movie clip here, that is my icon, you'll see that frame one shows me that the sound is currently off and sound frame two, I'm sorry, shows me that the sound is on. All right. So the, one of the big things here is that we can toggle something back and forth without using a conditional statement. Notice I never said if the sound is on, then tell the sound to turn up its op volume and tell this movie clip to go to a certain frame or else do the opposite. We don't need any of that. Once we switch this Boolean variable over to an integer, we can just tween to the value that we want and we can tell that movie clip to go to the value that it wants. It's really a very cool technique. And in fact, this whole demonstration came about uh, because I wanted to really focus on doing this sort of toggling without using conditional statements. And I have a few files already made up where I'm going to show you how you can toggle the visibility of a window without using a conditional statement. You can toggle the direction of a tween that's playing without using a conditional statement. And you can toggle how a timeline max is playing without using a conditional statement. You'll also notice here that uh, the text on these buttons is changing as well. So all this is done without using conditional statements at all. All right, so it's just a neat little bonus. But for now, let's just uh, give you my file that loads the external MP3 using the Loader Max MP3 loader. And again, I click and you get that nice tween fade in. Click again and it fades out. So it's not just an on off, you get this nice cool tween. Now I also built a file for those of you who may want to just toggle a sound that is in your library. There's a lot more you need to do though. You need to create a sound object, you need to create a sound channel, you need to create a sound transform, and then you need to tell your sound channel, <coughs> excuse me, to play a certain sound with a certain sound transform. So that's a whole lot of work just to get a sound to play that is in my library. And you'll see that my toggle sound function is pretty much the same as what I used before. All right, but I just wanted to show you in case you wanted to use toggle the volume of a sound that lives in your library. Let me just bring up my library for this right now. You'll see that I have chicken.mp3. And if you go to the properties for this symbol, you will see that it's exported as class chicken here. So the way that I can target that sound with ActionScript real quick, if that's what I wanted to do, would be to create a new sound and tell it to be a new chicken. But really, I know it's convenient to keep your sounds in your library, but it's much more efficient if you just start out by loading them externally. Because now I can load my file from my file system, I can track its progress, and I know that when it's loaded, my init function will run, I can then visually build the assets on my stage, I can set the volume to zero without a sound transform or building a sound channel or building a sound object. And I can tell it to repeat indefinitely, whereas with a sound channel, you can tell it to play 9,999 times. So the code's pretty concise and straightforward, and I'm really looking forward to this helping you out and also getting you excited about learning more about Loader Max when we start loading images, start loading videos, start loading Swiss and we can show you how to communicate with those things. But for now, I just thought for this week I'd give you something really pretty light to play with. So now you have the ultimate toggle and fade sound without using a conditional statement. Whammo. As an added, added bonus, you guys really should take this chicken.mp3 file that I'm giving you and drag it into your iTunes library. It's great when you're driving around, listening to your famous favorite hits on shuffle, and all of a sudden this thing pops on. It's great. It gets a lot of attention. So have fun with that, and I'll catch you soon for more. We got an AS3 code challenge coming up soon. It's going to blow your mind. Bye-bye.